grand plaisir pour moi de présenter un conseil des ministres euh, qui ressemble énormément au Canada. Uh, it's an incredible pleasure for me to be here today uh, before you to present uh, to Canada uh, a cabinet that looks like Canada. Uh, we, have, we have an awful lot of work to do uh, in the coming uh, weeks, months and years. But I know the Canadians expected us uh, to come together and put forward a team that is going to be able to deliver on the change, on the ambitious plan for this country that the Liberal Party ran on, and that's exactly what we are going to deliver. Les Canadiens ont eu de grandes attentes uh, pour nous, et je suis très content de démontrer que nous avons l'équipe extraordinaire pour livrer uh, sur les that valeurs, be able to deliver. Uh, uh, on the values, the plan that Canadians are expecting from this government. Hi, Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Um, we've seen congratulations, first of all, and we've seen some uh, visible changes in your approach. But could you just explain to us, if you had a message to Canadians, what kind of government are you hoping to offer them? How will it be different? Well, I think one of the first things is that we're a government uh, that wants to earn Canadians' trust by demonstrating that we trust Canadians. Uh, openness and transparency uh, isn't just about trust, though. It's also very much uh, about better policy making, uh, better decisions. When uh, media can do their jobs of holding us to account and asking tough questions, uh, when uh, disclosure and access to information is just the way uh, Parliament behaves, uh, when uh, open data uh, and uh, evidence-based policy is at the heart of policy making and governance decisions, uh, you get the kind of government that Canadians expect and deserve, and that's what we're going to be working very, very hard to deliver. And a, a second quick question. Um, you're making history today in the sense that you're the first Canadian Prime Minister whose father was a Prime Minister, and many people in the crowd mentioned your father, and I'm just wondering, do you have any thoughts today to share with us? Uh, obviously, I, I think of uh, my father and uh, how uh, pleased he must be uh, that uh, Canada so firmly came together around an ambitious vision for the country uh, that we presented. But my thoughts today, uh, sorry, Dad, aren't mostly on him. They're very much on my own kids uh, and on the kids across this country that we are going to work very, very hard to ensure they have a better future. Uh, I am forward-looking and that's what we're going to do. news. Uh, first of all, um, your cabinet, you said, looks a lot like Canada. And I understand one of the priorities for you was to have a cabinet that was gender balanced. Why was that so important to you? Because it's 2015. <laughs> Canadians uh, elected extraordinary members of parliament from across the country. Uh, and I am glad uh, to have been able to highlight uh, a few of them uh, in this cabinet here with me today. Uh, however, there are an awful lot of extraordinary Canadians uh, who uh, are not uh, in this cabinet behind me who are also uh, going to be strong voices for their community and their country. Uh, because one of the things that I am committed to is ensuring uh, that all parliamentarians, all uh, 307 of them who aren't uh, here with us today, uh, are uh, able to be strong voices for their communities, uh, to push their issues, and to make sure that the diversity that makes this Canada, this country, so strong uh, is the diversity that, of views that carry us forward. Uh, last week, you were asked uh, for an update on um, resettling the 25,000 Syrian refugees that you promised. You said last week that you would have more to say after you were sworn in. Well, you've been sworn in. <laughs> Can you give us an update on uh, what you're doing to get 25,000 refugees here to Canada? Well, I just took a big step towards it by appointing the kind of cabinet that's going to get things done. Uh, this is going to be uh, a period of slight adjustment for uh, a number of people in the political world in Canada uh, because government by cabinet uh, is back. Uh, we are going to sit down uh, around the cabinet table 
uh, and talk about uh, the solutions that need to put forward, what is in the best interests of Canadians, uh, and how we're going to deliver uh, on the promises that Canadians quite rightly expect us to keep. We're going to do it responsibly and, po and properly, uh, but we are going to keep the promises we made to Canadians to offer them the kind of country uh, that we know we deserve. Uh, NTD TV. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, you're, ha you're heading to APEC meeting and will meet with Asian leaders, including Chinese leaders. Um, as Canada does trade with China, we also know there's a grave human rights uh, concerns in that country. Uh, for example, the recent arrest of the um, human rights lawyers, uh, the torture and killing of Falun Gong practitioners, and the list goes on. Um, I want to ask you, are you going to stand up for Canadian values um, um, in raising the human rights issue with the Chinese counterpart and show Canadians that uh, in doing trade we're not going to sacrifice human Canadi rights? Canadians expect uh, of their government uh, to engage in protecting Canada's national interests in a positive and constructive way on the world stage. And yes, that means promoting our values and standing up for human rights. And it also means ensuring uh, that we can be a productive voice on the world stage to improve relations, to improve economic growth and opportunity for all, uh, but also to have frank and open conversations with our friends and trading partners. And Canada will continue always uh, to be a strong and positive voice on the world stage, uh, building the kind of future, uh, not just for Canadians, but for everyone on this planet uh, that we know uh, people expect. Do you think, do you think uh, in Canada's foreign policy with China, Canada can advance a human rights agenda to help that country? Uh, absolutely. I think Canada has uh, an awful lot to offer to many countries around the world, uh, whether it's uh, better governance, better, whether it's the idea that diversity is a source of strength, not a source of weakness. Uh, there is a positive engagement uh, firmly based on our values uh, that we know are not just Canadian values, but in, uh, in most cases are universally shared values across the world, uh, that we have work to do and we will do that work. With your ministers behind you and uh, the ceremony uh, swearing you in, what message do you want to send to Canadians? What do you want to them to remember about today? Well, first of all, that we are forming a government that uh, places trust at the very cent centre of its actions. We want to deserve the trust and confidence of Canadians, and uh, in order to do that, we will show that we trust Canadians by being open and transparent about our actions, developing policies that are evidence-based, and understanding that we have a responsibility to be accountable to the media and Canadians all the time. That is a priority for me, and I think that is the kind of change that Canadians asked for in this election. Now, you're going to be having your first cabinet meeting this afternoon and talking about priorities. What exactly are those priorities? What do you want to accomplish between now and the end of the year? Well, one of the first discussions we will have will be about uh, the return of Parliament. Now, I would like to recall Parliament within the first few days of December, but that is a discussion we will be having with the Cabinet in order to confirm the date. But as I've said throughout the campaign, one of our top priorities and our top priority will be to lower taxes for the middle class by asking wealthier Canadians or the 1% of wealthier Canadians to pay a little more. And that is what we will be introducing as our first bill in Parliament. It's, it's no secret that uh, a lot of students around the country go into tremendous amounts of debt coming out of their post-secondary education. I was wondering, now that you've been sworn in, if you have any plans to maybe reduce the load that those students have to bear. Uh, we know uh, that the future of our country 
uh, is deeply uh, wrapped up in a positive future for our young people. Uh, access to post-secondary education is going to be essential for economic growth in this country, and that's why we put forward a strong plan uh, to increase the Canada Student uh, Grants uh, and Loan System to make sure uh, that young people have better access to post-secondary education, uh, including uh, for Indigenous Canadians uh, who see tremendous barriers. Uh, but also, uh, we have uh, made a commitment uh, that loans don't need to be paid back by students until such a time as they are making $25,000 a year uh, in salary and revenue. Uh, that's the kind of thing that pushes off uh, the kinds of debts that are crippling our young people. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Trudeau. Are you surprised to see Peel criticizing you for having uh, pre set aside certain male uh, cabinet ministers in order to have more women? cabinet ministers. Well, we're in 2015 now, and I think we need a cabinet that is a reflection of the magnificent diversity we have in Canada. That was a priority for me. But as you also know, Canadians have sent people to the House of Commons that are absolutely extraordinary members of the Liberal Party, and we expect all parliamentarians to play an important role in order to ensure that the concerns and priorities of all Canadians are heard in this parliament, that they are heard by this government, and that we deliver the kind of government that the Canadians are expecting. Uh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, you're, in a couple weeks you'll be heading to Paris, where you're going to be asked to commit to serious uh, goals on reducing carbon emissions here in Canada, but you've not committed to any sort of plan on the federal level to do so. You said you're going to get the provinces on board. Optimistically, do you think that's even possible to actually get the provinces to adapt a plan that's going to be enough to meet the uh, pretty serious targets that you're going to be asked to commit to? Canadians uh, expect uh, their government to be responsible around climate change and addressing the uh, impacts of the environment that we are facing around the world right now. Canada is going to be a strong and positive actor uh, on the world stage, including uh, in Paris at COP21. Uh, that's why we have uh, a very strong uh, uh, minister, not just of the environment, but minister of the environment and climate change, uh, who will be at the heart of this uh, uh, this discussion. And she's, of course, uh, an Ottawa girl. Uh, we can see uh, uh, see the support for her here. Uh, but the fact is that we have an amazing team of strong cabinet members uh, who will uh, lean in with the kind of engagement both with the provinces uh, and municipalities uh, and. Uh, countries around the world to demonstrate that Canada is doing its part to address climate change impacts. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you very, very much.